This week's Met Office 10-day trend brings good news if you're a fan of spring sunshine. However, it's bad news if you're after some rain, and it has been a very dry April so far. And uh, gardeners, not good news again if you're hoping to plant some delicate flowers because the frost risk continues. One feature of the weather, the next few days, some gusty winds across southwest England into next week and, well, only gradual or subtle changes, if any at all. An increased chance of some rain, but we're basically going from zero to something a little bit higher. It is far from a guarantee of any of the wet stuff. And if we do see any rain, it's most likely across northern parts early next week. High pressure is dominating at the moment. That's why the weather is uh, fine and settled right now. This weak weather front is pushing away to the south and then the high just waddles around for the rest of this week, including the weekend. Weather fronts flirt with the far north of Scotland and there is low pressure down to the southwest, bringing wet and windy weather to Spain and Portugal. But the main influence of that is it does squeeze the isobars together between the low and the high, and that is what's responsible for the winds picking up across the south coast of England, south coast of Wales. But we could see some particularly gusty conditions over the far southwest of England. Now that is caused by something called a temperature inversion. I'm going to show you a tephigram now. This is a profile of the atmosphere from the ground going all the way up, and the black line is the temperature profile as you get higher. Now, if you think about it, normally as you go up through the atmosphere, you'd imagine the temperature would be falling, and most of the time it is. But this line here is indicating that the temperature is actually rising for a time as we go up through the atmosphere. And this is an inversion. It's created by that high pressure sitting around uh, for a number of days. And it's important uh, for winds in particular across the southwest over the next few days because it kind of acts as an invisible ceiling. So as the winds pick up along the south coast and they're pushed up, say, by the moors in the southwest, this temperature inversion prevents the winds from extending too high and they kind of get pushed back down by that invisible ceiling and that creates a gustiness to the lee of the moors in the southwest. So we could see some fairly lively gusts of wind over Cornwall and West Devon especially for Thursday, Friday and into the weekend. The high pressure then will try and stick around into the new week, but it gets replaced by low pressure across the north on Monday. Or does it? Now look closely at that low pressure. It's a pretty feeble thing. There's not many isobars around it. It is fairly weak. And uh, the reason for that is because it's being pushed along by a, a fairly weak arm of the jet stream. In fact, if we take a, a wider look at the jet stream right across the Atlantic and beyond, you can see it's in the... Uh, a bit of a mess, really. No really strong signals. The, the pink cores, the harder, uh, stronger winds are well away from the UK and across the Atlantic. And it's this arch in the jet stream uh, that's responsible for pushing that low pressure system close to the UK. But because it's so fragmented, so weak, there's quite a bit of uncertainty about the strength of the jet and therefore the position of that low. And that's shown in these three charts. These are the main three computer models that we tend to look at mostly here at the Met Office. The Met Office computer model showing that low pressure, that weak low pressure across Scotland for Monday. But the European model has, well, albeit a slightly more active area of low pressure, more intense, but it's way to the north. And GFS, the American computer model, has something similar to uh, the European model. So that's why there's quite a bit of uncertainty about the position of that low into early next week because the jet stream is fairly weak and fragmented. There is more uncertainty than usual. And it's important because of the position of the low will dictate how far south that rain gets. And, uh, well, it's most likely that we could see a bit of rain from that low across parts of Scotland, with many places still set to uh, stay dry. Beyond that, well, again, we're looking at things slowly changing, perhaps. This is the European uh, model for the pressure probabilities through next week. The dates going along the bottom there and the uh, percentage probabilities going up the y-axis here. Red is high pressure and you can see 100% high pressure in control for the next four or five days as we've already seen. The different shades of red, just the different orientations of that high pressure. It's not really until we start to get to the middle of next week that there are some suggestions that low pressure could be involved. But even then, by the end of next week, it's only really 
50-50. So it's only a pretty weak signal that we could see things changing next week. By and large, I suspect a lot of dry weather still for much of next week and more spring sunshine and a continued likelihood of some patchy frost. As always, for day-to-day -day details, make sure you're following the Met Office on social media.